so in this video we'll be exclusively talking about solutions and how exactly it um, is present in our day to day life so some keywords that we should pay attention to would be these ones dissolve what does dissolving mean um fertilizers insoluble soluble solvent pesticides what's a reversible process what is solute solution uniform universal now here we see peanuts and raisins getting mixed together and this is known as mixture and then we have sand and water together which is mixed together so whenever we have two different items getting mixed together we call it as mixtures similarly to the snacks that we eat it's also known as mixtures because we have peanuts there we have some bhel we have some rice puffs and other things rice and flour it becomes a mixture again tea leaves and water iron fill fillings and rice so what is dissolving and what is solution now tea is a liquid sugar is a solid so they are in different states of matter when you put sugar in your tea and when you mix it sugar seems to get dissolved right it disappears so this is known as dissolving so we will say that the sugar has disappeared in the tea which means that it has completely dissolved solids can dissolve in a liquid and so it is known as soluble solids and those solids which cannot be dissolved in a uh, liquid it is known as insoluble for example a salt is a solid a sugar is a solid when you dissolve it in liquid it gets completely dissolved so these are soluble solids but if you take uh, rice particles if you say sand they would not get dissolved and you will say they are insoluble now mixtures are made of different substances which is mixed together so dissolving is a type of mixing because when solid dissolves it will mix with the liquid we call the mixture as a solution because it's in liquid state and the solid in the solution is called a solute for example that is the sugar and the liquid where you are mixing the sugar is known as the solvent so it's very important whenever we make a solution we need a solute and a solvent let me show it to you because sometimes when we read we often get sleepy so it's important for me to draw it for you right so far whatever we have understood we are learning solution and then we are learning soluble and insoluble i hope this is definitely clear so i'm not going to repeat it now then when you have to form a solution solution is like going to exist in liquid form all right so in a solution we need two things one is a solute and the other thing is a solvent so a solute is the solid and the solvent is the liquid form where which where you are dissolving so if this is my liquid i'm going to call it as my solvent and if i'm pouring some salt i'm going to call it as a solute and then the whole thing together becomes a solution so if i draw it in a chemical diagram i'm going to say a solute plus a solvent makes a solution coming back to our book here um this is all clear many substances in dissolve in water this is another uh, water properties that you know um, any substance can easily dissolve in water what is sometimes called a universal solvent now this is the next question that can come in your school exam children that why is water called as a universal solvent and the answer is pretty simple here so sorry why repeat after me why is water called a universal solvent universal means all throughout you know why it is called as a universal solvent because 
anything and here i can say a solute because we know that solute gets dissolved anything can easily get dissolved in water and that is why it is known as a universal solvent coming back to our textbook page water pollution we know that water is getting polluted by so many other things some pollutions can be harm some solutions can be harmful some soluble substances can pollute water especially uh, you know uh, disposals from um, homes waste wastage from industries we have to be very careful of you know what are the things that we are throwing away and it has to be properly taken care of so polluted water can harm plants animals as well as people dissolved chemicals such as acids from factories can pollute rivers and lakes since it's a universal solvent it can easily dissolve any third party substance that it comes in contact with now farmers they put chemical fertilizers in the soil to make their crops grow better these fertilizers sometimes wash into the rivers and pollute the water now this is the example of you know pesticides so pesticides are really harmful they use it to kill the insects because then the insects they don't allow the fruits and vegetables to grow and that's the reason why we have to wash our fruits and vegetables thoroughly before consuming it but these pesticides are really harmful chemicals and it causes cancer so these days a lot of people are enrolling themselves for organic farming and they're looking it up as a great business opportunities so this is what it is insoluble substance in water can also cause pollution the simplest example would be uh, plastic uh, water bottles and other items which doesn't get dissolved in water and they are freely floating on the water surface that you see they are also causing water pollution and also human body waste oil because oil doesn't get dissolved in water now the particles of the solute move between the solvent particles when they dissolve uh, so if we see the red thing which is a salt and if i talk about the particle model i have explained it to you that solid uh, particles are closely packed and that's why the red thing that you see they are so tightly packed together and the solvent that is water particle it's in a liquid state so the atoms are freely moving once the salt dissolves this is how the uh, solution looks like that water has completely uh, like salt has completely dissolved in water and now it has become a part of the solution and it's in a liquid state so you can see how how evenly the salt and water particles are spread and they give a very uniform appearance and that's how we say that it is completely dissolved now if there is something like um, if i again draw it in a particle model here this is water and i have added another solid over here which is a solute in this form it's a solid even after mixing stirring it remains as it is so what will you call how is this solute so definitely the answer is going to be insoluble right because we see them as it is this is insoluble so it's very important for, for us to please excuse my spelling for us to see the change in the process nothing has happened so it's an insoluble solute and this is how the particle model look like will look like particle model next how are you going to separate the solution now firstly i would want you to understand what a solution is solution is a mixture of a solute and a solvent in simpler terms we can say solution is a mixture of a solid and liquid right like a salt and water how can you separate it can you reverse it back once it completely dissolves once it is completely dissolved it changes into liquid right as we saw the diagram
here particle model suppose if i take a salt this is water this is salt they're all stuck together because salt is in solid state now after stirring it gets equally evenly spread and it becomes a solution now my question is can you my question is can you separate the salt from liquid is it possible to get the solute out from the solvent children so definitely there is a process to reverse the pro uh, process and this is known as a reversible or an irreversible process so we can separate the dissolved solution sorry dissolved solute from a solvent by evaporation all right so what you do is simply heat the solution all the water is going to change into gas and whatever is left behind is going to be your solute that is your salt or sugar and this is known as uh, evaporation and we call this a reversible process because we can get back the dissolved solute from the solution we have to get back the solid that we had mixed and i think that's the end of this chapter all i would want you to do is watch the video again children and uh, try to understand the particle model also understand that it's so simple to um, you know separate how can we separate the solute from the solvent and uh, what is a reversible process read the chapter thoroughly and solve the questions the back questions that's present in the workbook and uh, in the textbook and also solve the worksheets that's provided from your school so how to change how to change or i would say how to reverse the process and get solute back from the solvent all right so this is how my solution looks like with the red one that is the salt particle and the blue one is the liquid particle and they have all been completely mixed so it's a soluble soluble solution all right now how can you reverse the process reverse the process simply heat it up so once you heat it once you heat water is going to evaporate and all that is going to be left back would be your solid so i'm just going to the water rises here all the atoms are disappearing in in the form of steam and all that i have left i'm left with are those salt or sugar whichever um, solute you had used and that's how you can separate it from the solution so all the very best guys for your exam and um, i hope it was an interesting as well as informative video don't forget to like it and comment down in the section so that i'll know that you have enjoyed the video it's going to encourage me to make more of such videos for you for quick revision purpose Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.